The medial half of the upper lid skin crease incision was marked preoperatively and infiltrated with local anaesthetic with adrenaline. The skin and orbicularis have been incised. The septum is incised. The medial orbital fat pad, which is denser and paler than the other fat pads, is gently teased out, taking great care never to put much traction on it. The fat can be excised with cautery, as you see here, or alternatively clamped, cut and diathermy of the stump. Both techniques minimise the risk of bleeding, which if it does occur as the fat retracts, could result in retrobulbar orbital haemorrhage. The fat is placed in a syringe so that it can be measured and compared to the other side. The suprolateral fat, which is a darker yellow colour, can be excised. However, the potential gains are less with the smaller volume of accessible fatty tissue and the risks slightly higher as great care has to be taken to avoid injuring the lacrimal gland and its ductules. The inferior orbital fat is being excised through a swinging lower eyelid incision that has been used for a bony decompression. This orbital approach and lateral wall and orbital floor decompression are shown in other videos on this website. There are three areas of fat in the lower lid. Although often described as fat pads, they are in fact contiguous with the undivided mass of orbital fat posteriorly and are perhaps better thought of as three distinct anterior areas that are created by the arcuate expansion and inferior oblique muscles pressing into the main body of orbital fat. Again, the medial fat is denser and paler than the darker, more yellow central fat pad. The inferior lateral fat has the greatest volume and therefore in the lower lid it provides more decompression for less risk. The lateral fat pad is gently teased out and excised. It is divided from the medial fat pad by the arcuate expansion, which is carefully preserved. The middle fat pad is also teased out and excised, taking great care of the inferior oblique muscle between it and the medial fat pad. The fat is removed very slowly and often piecemeal, and is typically more fibrotic in patients with thyroid eye disease, and even more so in those who have previously had orbital radiotherapy. With a cautious fat de decompression, as you see here, around two millilitres of fat may be removed, which results in around one to one and a half millimetres reduction in proptosis.